Hi, and welcome to another story time, y'all, brought to you by ABC Read and ABC Learn, in which we are here to help develop and nurture that love of reading in every child as well as every adult. How are you all doing out there today, evening, morning, late at night, real, real early in the morning, whatever time of day it is, wherever you are on the planet? I hope that you all are doing fantabulous. And I hope that you all have incorporated at least 30 minutes of reading into your day. All right? All right, all right. Well, let's get started, you guys. Well, before we get started with our read aloud, I first want to share with you all another reading aloud benefit. And I know it's an overall reading benefit, period, which is reading aloud helps you to develop research habits. All right? Well, what is research, you might ask? And I know most of you already know. That is when you are looking up information about particular topics. And so when you are listening to stories and even the person who is doing the reading aloud themselves, you guys may come across different subjects in the story that you may not have heard of. And so it helps you to, you know, start to say, hey, wait a minute, I want to find out more about this particular topic. So I am going to do some research. All right. So remember, keep on doing those reading alouds. All right. And listening to those read alouds. All right. All right, y'all, let's do this. Bam! Love it, love it. Look at this awesome book. The awesome cover, of course. Yes, once again, I said it again. Yes, I did, and it's awesome. It's beautiful. Let's read the title together. Ada Twist, Scientist. Ah, by Andrea Beatty, illustrated by David Roberts. Look at this awesome cover. Look at that little girl right there. Oh my goodness. And look at him. Oh, wow. What do you all think he is saying to her? Is she writing on the walls? Do you think he is like, ooh, you're in trouble? <laughs> That's what that face looks like to me. And look at her face. And she is just looking like the little curious, little beautiful girl with her beautiful little afro puffs well let's find out about miss ada twist the scientist and see what's going on what is this story going to be about i'm excited are you guys i'm so excited whoa ada marie ada marie said not a word till the day she turned three she bounced in her crib and looked all around observing the world, but not making a sound. She learned how to climb and made her big break with a trail of chaos left in her wake. She ran through the day chasing each sound and sight and didn't slow down till she conked out at night. Her parents were frazzled, but tried not to freak as Ada grew bigger and still did not speak. Clearly young Ada with lots in her head would have something to say when it ought to be said. That's just what happened when Ada turned three. She tore through the house on a fact-finding spree and climbed up the clock just as high as she could. Her parents yelled, stop! as all good parents would. Ada's chin quivered, but she did not cry. She took a deep breath and she simply asked, why? Why does it tick and why does it talk? Why don't we call it a granddaughter clock? Why are there pointy things stuck to a rose? Why are their hairs up inside of your nose? She started with why and then what, how and when. By bedtime, she came back to why once again. She drifted to sleep as her dazed parents smiled at the curious thoughts of their curious child who wanted to know what the world was about. They kissed her and whispered, you'll figure it out. Her parents kept up with their high-flying kid, whose questions and chaos both grew as she did. E 
even Miss Greer found her hands were quite full when young Ada's chaos wreaked havoc at school. But this much was clear about Miss Ada Twist. She had all the traits of a great scientist. Ada was busy that first day of spring, testing the sounds that make mockingbirds sing. When a horrible stench whacked her right in the nose, a pungent aroma that curled up her toes. Zowie, said Ada, which got her to thinking. What is the source of that terrible stinking? How does a nose know there's something to smell? And does it stink if there's no nose to tell? She rattled off questions and tapped on her chin. She started the start where she ought to begin. A mystery, a riddle, a puzzle, a quest. This was the moment that Ada loved best. Ada did research to learn all she could of smelling and smells, both the stinky, ew, and good. One hypothesis Ada thought could be true. The terrible stink came from dad's cabbage stew. She tested and tested, but soon Ada knew it was time to come up with hypothesis too. Then Zowie, the stink struck again, just like that. Hypothesis two, it's caused by the cat. The cat couldn't make such a stink on its own. It needed perfume and some fancy cologne. So young Ada tested. The test was a flop. She started again, but her parents yelled, stop! Ada Marie, Ada Marie, to the thinking chair now. By the time we count three, enough said her mother. That's it, said her dad. Her parents were frustrated, frazzled, and mad. Why, Ada questioned. Her mother said, no. What, Ada queried. Her father said, go. You've ruined our supper. You've made the cat stink. Enough with your questions. Now sit there and think. She looked at her parents. Her heart turned to goo. Poor Ada Twist didn't know what to do. She sat all alone by herself in the hall and Ada once more could say nothing at all. And so Ada sat, and she sat, and she sat, and she thought about science and Stu and the cat and how her exper experiments made such a big mess. Does it have to be so? Is that part of success? Are messes a problem? And while she was thinking, what was the source of that terrible stinking? Ada Marie did what scientists do. She asked a small question, and then she asked two. And each of those led her to three questions more. And some of those questions resulted in four. As Ada got thinking, she really dug in. She scribbled her questions and tapped on her chin. She started at why, and then what, how, and when. At the end of the hall, she reached why once again. Her parents calmed down and they came back to talk. They looked at the hallway and just had to gawk. No patch of bare paint could be seen on the wall. The thinking chair now was the great thinking hall. They watched their young daughter and sighed as they did. What would they do with this curious kid who wanted to know what the world was about? 
They smiled and whispered, we'll figure it out. And that's what they did, because that's what you do. When your kid has a passion and heart that is true, they remade their world. Now they're all in the act of helping young Ada sort fiction from fact. She asks lots of questions. How could she resist? It's all in the heart of a young scientist. And as for that smell, what can Ada Twist do but learn all she can with her friends in grade two? Why, will they discover the stink that curls toes? <laughs> well, that is the question. And someday, who knows? The end. Well, once again, I hope that you all enjoyed that story. And I hope that you all have learned plenty of lessons from that story. And again, just like we talked about in the beginning, right? About another reading aloud benefit is to do some research, right? And this is what Miss Ada Twist Scientist, that's what she was doing, right? She was uh, showing the, uh, exemplifying the uh, character or characteristics, I should say, of a scientist, right? All of that research she was doing, all of those questions that she was asking and how awesome it was that her parents were trying to help their curious, beautiful daughter figure it all out. That is awesome. And I hope that you all took away uh, those points and as well as some other points uh, that you all have thought about on your own as well. And I hope that you all continue to research and continue to read. And remember to like, subscribe, and share our videos. All right, you guys, take care. And I'll be reading to you next time. Happy reading.